Okay, this is a reply video to the Rage and Rejects uh, TV video. It's top 25 wrestlers of all time. Now, I may managed to make it all the way through the video, uh, but basically, he, he's made a list, uh, and it, the name is kind of misleading. It's his top 25 wrestlers that he likes. Uh, it's not a very objective list. So, in this, in what it actually is, I'm going to make a list of my current top 10. Because after, uh, after I get past 10, it's very hard to come down, you know, to... Well, this guy's 11, but no, no, I'll let this go, but okay, yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, so, here's my top 10 favorite wrestlers. First off, number 10, DDP. Now, granted, uh, I didn't particularly like his WWE run because I'd seen him bits and pieces before that, I'd seen a few matches of his, and I knew what we were getting in both respects was not quite what uh, he was. So, going back over it, there are, if you really like him, you probably prefer his WCW run. And it was a pretty good run. Uh, I just started watching some of the 97 stuff and some 96 stuff. He was really starting to come into his own in 96. And by the end of 96, he sort of started to realize maybe this guy can be a name. And eventually he did become like a big name there in WCW. I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves for helping that company try and stay afloat for as long as it did. But, anyway, moving on now. Number nine is The Sandman. Now, I didn't see a lot of his ECW stuff because uh, it wasn't really shown over here. So, I got to see him come in to TNA. And it was, and I was intrigued because I I was like who's who's this guy and why is he running around with a cane? And then I realised I'd seen him before as Hack in one of the WCW shows that I'd seen. So I kind of knew him, but I didn't really know a lot about him. But uh, since then, I've caught some more of his stuff, and <laughs> he's one of my favourite hardcore wrestlers. Uh, as far as He's just, uh, he's the Sandman, so that's, uh, and I, I like him, so. Moving on now, number eight is Christian, and this is more for after he broke out on his own. I really liked that music uh, that he had uh, during his, I think it was his first Intercontinental title run, where he, the music would hit, and it'd be, Christian! Christian! I really liked that, and it, then it would go be at last you're on your own, and uh, then if you pay attention to the subtitles, it was really interesting what they had going on with him. Uh, and his stuff with Jericho is great. Uh, a few. <laughs> the few. Uh, then once he went to TNA after, he was like. Uh, it's like he was hitting this ceiling, and like he he needed. I don't know what I don't know what WWE thought he needed before he got that may that main event run that he probably deserved. I don't know what they were waiting on. I don't know if it was just his size, but once he went to TNA, uh, I read that in the magazines because I didn't. We didn't have TNA over here at the time, and I was like. Maybe they're going to do something with him. And uh, granted, a lot of people don't like his first title run with the NWA world title. But I kind of do. I like I, I like that they were pushing him against Abyss, which is a another guy that 
probably wouldn't make it onto this list, but I'll, I'll mention honorable mentions later. And I just thought, wow, they're hel helping their, their own talent by putting over this guy that didn't re uh, that should have really got that run. And I'm glad that he did get get it. And um, fortunately, they, didn't get, they haven't got much footage of his second run, but. I'm planning on getting some more stuff from that, but okay. Moving on, number seven, the cowboy James Storm. Uh, now, this is really interesting because when I first started watching TNA, uh, I was a big fan of America's Most Wanted. I thought, man, what a great great tag team. They, they do, uh, they're working like a real tag team would work, and they're really good then I uh, later on when I heard about their breakup after what was it eight eight or nine title well, I think it was eight title runs together as a tag team and then they broke broke them up and I thought okay they're going to break them up and they're going to do some stuff on their own interesting interesting stuff uh, and then when he <coughs> went on to form Beer Money with Bobby Roode who was also on this list is was a great run. I actually think you wouldn't have beer money without AMW, and you wouldn't have Team Canada without AMW. So they really f the two uh, James Storm and Chris Harris deserve credit for getting that tag team scene going in TNA when they did, and great run, guys. They great wrestlers, both of them. Um, Chris Harris, not so much anymore, but I'd love to see them do something with him. Uh, anyway, uh, the, that's James Storm. So, on to number six, Bobby Roode. I just lo love his thing now, the id factor of professional wrestling. I really dig that. It, it's so much... Uh, he's like a Ric Flair in a way or something. Uh, the, he, he's built himself up and I really see a lot of similarities to what they're doing with him now and what they did with Triple H during his first few title runs in WWE. So it's really interesting. So if you, if you go back and watch some 99 stuff, you, you, you realise that Oh, okay, I see what they're doing with, the, with uh, Poppy Roode. They're, they're trying to make him the... And they're succeeding in making him like the main guy in uh, TNA right now. So that's really good. Okay, number five. Uh, this is someone that came out of here for a run. I got their autograph around here somewhere. It's, I think it's in the cupboard over here. Uh, Christopher Daniels, him and AJ came out here, and man, they tore that house down at the, uh, wherever it was, I don't, it wasn't at the Superdome, but it was nearby, it was up there, there somewhere, uh, and the main event was Jeff Jarrett and Rhino, they had, they had the, they brawled all over the arena, but, uh, AJ Daniels just tore the house down. Phenomenal stuff, but wow, great stuff. And Chris Daniels again. I one of the first matches I saw him in was when Raven made his debut, and I love that springboard moonsault thing that he did. That he did uh, right there at the end, and that that interesting hold that he <laughs> had on Jarrett there for a bit. And oh, he's very innovative. I very innovative with certain moves, so... Anyway, number four, Mick Foley. Foley got me into pro wrestling. He was, um... I was watching Superstars, because uh, it was on Channel 10 out here for a while, and I just loved his sense of humour as the Mankind character. This was just after he won the world title, and... Uh, Great stuff. I've gone back over some of that 99 stuff and it's really great. It's per stuff. I really dig Mick. He's great. Uh, great wrestler. 
Uh, anyway, moving on to number three now, Raven. Uh, talk about uh, a wasted talent in WWE. Uh, not so much for his Johnny Polo stuff, but for, for the Raven stuff. He comes in, teams with Taz for a while. He has a few runs of the hardcore title. He, but basically, after really... 2001, mid, mid, even mid-2001, he's not doing anything. I mean, God, talk about waste. What a waste, you know? But I guess he had nowhere to go and everything. And once he showed up in TNA, I was like, wow, this... Until then, I didn't realise how much depth the Raven character actually had, you know? I, I hadn't seen a whole lot of ECW stuff. I had seen some WWE stuff, WCW stuff, but man, what depth do this, this character has and what a past and everything. Great stuff. Uh, move, moving on to number two now, my second favourite wrestler, AJ Styles. Uh, he truly lives up to his name. Phenomenal. Oh, God. The, the triple threat match. Yeah, unbreakable. Again, that's Chris Daniels and and that. Uh, great. Great talent. Uh, even with guys you wouldn't think he'd have much chemistry with. Raven. Uh, who would have thought Raven and him would have a great match? Uh, they Check out their ladder match that they had. Uh, man. Great stuff. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to move on to number one now. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of this guy. Number one mark, The Undertaker. Uh, for, from nearly the first time, I've always been fascinated with this character. Uh, man, another guy with a lot of depth, character depth. Uh, and a great wrestler to top, top it all off. Granted, now he's he's only wrestling once a year, really. But man, back in the day, uh, great. I, I remember when he, he went on that hiatus at the tail end of 99. I was curious to see how he'd come back. And you'll be interested to know that... um. Armageddon uh, from 99, he's in the poster. He was on the wallpaper or something for it. And I thought he was coming back. I thought this was a hint that he was coming back, but uh, I think he got injured again just after that. So, wow. <laughs> and he was back, uh, back on the shelf uh, again for another few months. But then he comes back at Judgment Day and a completely different character. The Ender Biker. And I know a lot of people don't particularly like that. I actually like that from a character standpoint. That's a great character. Uh, it's, granted, he probably didn't have a lot to work with. And all that. But, yeah. Alright. So, uh, so, I'll move on to some honourable mentions now. Some people that probably would have made the list. Uh, Vader. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, great physical stuff, uh, the fact that he can do a moonsault, uh, and he, and he's a big, such a big guy to go along with it, and granted he's got a bigger belly than I do, so, <laughs> uh, so who, who else, uh, uh, Sid, uh, I'm, I actually do like Sid, I, even though I heard he got in a knife fight with Arn Anderson, uh, Arn's another guy that would make the list, uh, I reckon he, considering the stuff that he did with a broken neck for a few years, that's amazing. Uh, as well as uh, Ric Flair. I do like Rick. Uh, I like Dusty as well. Uh, Hulk Hogan, not so much. I was, uh, And same with Austin and Rock. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of theirs. Uh, I, th I like Austin more than I like Rock. Um... But I'm not a big fan of either the, either of theirs, so I, I, it's nothing against them. I reckon they're both great wrestlers. I just really don't like. I really, I like them, but I'm I'm not a huge fan of either of theirs. 
Uh, Bret Hart. Now, if there was anyone that was going to be another 11 on this list, it probably would be Bret. Because, uh, man, that, that, that guy internationally, I think, is bigger than what he is in the US. I think he's such a nice, uh, and he seems like such a nice guy and everything. And he's been through a lot, lost a lot of family members, like Owen is another guy, like a uh, British Bulldog, another one. Uh, and again, I think, I think he came along just at the right speed. He didn't get, he didn't get that world title earlier than he should have. He, he, his WCW run, not so much. I, I think, I think if you gave him the belt, uh, probably around Great American Bash that year, uh, 98, uh, and let him have a run with it, uh, would have been great, uh, and, um, just check out my WCW 98 stuff, that's, uh, the way I would have booked it, uh, that, uh, I think that's a bit inter uh, the way I did it was quite interesting, I you, uh, was influenced greatly by what the Wrestling Roundtable guys did, but, I think I, uh, I went in a way that made like my own thing uh, as well. Uh, anyway, this is a long video for a reply. Uh, yeah, so Rage and Reject, just be careful what you title your videos from in future. Uh, uh, and if you're gonna gonna say, uh, I'd rename your video. 25 favorite wrestlers, not 25 best of all time, because I checked out your list, man. <laughs> Apart from a few on your list, none of them deserve, none of them, uh, not a lot of them deserve to be in anywhere near the top 25 wrestlers. It's a lot, of, a lot of, not all of them, but quite a few of them. Anyway, that's it.